the kids ain't grown up with um with uh loving them, they're all grown up with apes and all that. Always looking over your shoulder, always wondering what was gonna happen next. Always living in a state of fear really. You don't know shit. Because you ain't been there and you don't understand that he's scared and he walks with his knife. And suddenly you're part of it. You're part of the culture without even really understanding what you've got yourself into. I don't really understand why he does it. I've tried to talk to him. I don't I don't get why he does it and I don't think I ever will. Death, violence was all part and package of the of the journey. Today's operation isn't so much about catching a Mr. Big in the drugs world, but the small time operators out on the streets of St. Paul's and Easton. We were very concerned because we saw an increase in people selling drugs and um, this was happening around the area, sort of near schools, near parks and uh, quite a lot of people were sort of upset about this and also upset about some of the ages of the young people, you know, who were 14, 15 that they saw being dragged into this. The main Stapleton Road through Easton is my sort of neighbourhood area. Why should it just be a fact of life that if you live in these inner city areas, you have to be exposed to drug dealing activity? Because all the associated issues that we get from that, the antisocial behaviour, the increased crime rates, it's just all things that these local residents have got to put up with and that's why. You didn't want to stop for me then, did you? Why, why, why did I want to stop for you? You were driving a bit quick. I wouldn't say I was driving quick at all. You think you've got 3,000 drug users that access these communities to buy drugs. So um, the communities have to put up with um, drug misuse going on right in front of them. Is it, it became apparent that as people were taking their kids to school, they'd be walking past drug deals going on in the street or they'd have to put up with um, drug misuse in their gardens and that's never ever going to be acceptable. Well, with my job I see a lot of the background because I work in the area, I deliver youth work in the area. I've also grown up in the area so I can see the historic background. About 50% of them were 25 and under. So it was quite upsetting you know, to see young people kind of being caught up in this and really ruining their lives at such a young age. Young people see it as an easy option. So what we found out, particularly in Eastern, is that actually young guys go through school really well and they do well at school and then school comes to an end and they just don't really see the next phase of their life go from education to employment and dealing drugs or um, becoming involved in street conflict seems like an easy option. I was a, I'm just been a, I'm just a leader, I was just a leader, so really, I was the, I was the boss. I mean the police just look at it, watch it, find out everything about it and lock them up, that's what they want to do, you know what I mean? And then send them to jail and expect them to come out a better person. I don't know. Do you know what I mean? You take away their life, you just take them away 18, 19 or whatever, you send them back out at 25, 26, they're lost. They're lost. You know what I mean? They come out, all they know is what they knew before. Do you know what I mean? And you just leave them to be, put them on probation for a little bit and so say watch them or whatever you're doing. Do you know what I mean? It's not no good. They need more. Where we've got evidence of people dealing drugs in the street and destroying their communities, then we should, we should continue with enforcement and we should make sure that the outcome for that person is prison uh, because that's never going to be acceptable and I don't think it's acceptable to the public either. A basic supply and demand issue in Eastern and St Paul's where you've got all these people that are drug dependent. However, when we arrest those people, we know there's going to be a massive void. Sometimes it depends on 
which side you're taking away. <laughs> you take away the, these Eastern boys, you know, and you take away these poor guys. It's rarely you take them both away at the same time. You take all you you you, you weak on St. Paul's. You make the Eastern guys get all bright. You know what I mean? And they come and they take away five or six out Eastern, and they make the St. Paul's guys get bright. It's, it's like they're it's like they're it's like they're pushing it. It's like they're pushing it to me, because they ain't doing nothing about it to help it out, as far as I'm concerned. Well, I can tell you that on my way in here this morning, I passed someone who was looking to buy drugs. There are still drugs being sold because of that, all this operation, it didn't actually attack the demand at all, it attacked the supply side of things. Now, where there is demand, you are gonna get supply. That's basic economics. <sighs> this is the scene that I have most common to me. This whole road here, this is where I grew up. The black and white cafe was right there. I don't know if you remember the black and white cafe at all. Most notorious whatever they want to call it um, and this was home basically this whole area here was home we had big aspirations as children we wanted to be doctors lawyers policemen even um, we wanted to be all of that when we were children but somehow through our teenage years that got lost and we wanted then to be successful but we realized that or we thought that we weren't going to be able to live out our dreams, so we changed our dreams. It changed dramatically into aggression and um, violence. When I spoke to the police, I was given um, kind of a lot of information about who these people may be um, and what they're capable of, what sort of life they lead. Um, before that I didn't have any idea. Um, and I kind of wish I still had no idea. As a 17 year old, 18 year old, wanting to be successful, not knowing how to, but then being presented with the idea of being able to sell drugs and make money. Um, I believe every person wants to be successful and be able to provide for their family, most of us coming from families that were broken and underprivileged, we didn't see many role models um, that could show us that it could be done. But yet we had other role models that could evidently show us that wealth was there or riches or whatever, the things that we thought were important. When you're 18 you think that trainers and all that sort of stuff is important, so we, we, did, we, we did what we did in order to get those things. It's a huge worry, um, but it's not something that's within my control, so I can only be here in the way that I am and that he knows I'm here if I'm wanted or needed. I can't really do any more than that. I don't have, I can't control it, I can't stop his pattern of behaviour. I can just be here for whatever happens. There is ways out. As you get older, you find that out, innit? But when you're young, you don't see none of that. The only people you see that's maybe finding a little way out is, is, is drug dealers with nice cars and look like they're finding their way out. But little do we know, they wasn't finding no way out. So it goes. It wasn't something that we were comfortable with. It wasn't something that we thought was good. But when you grow up in, a, in an area where you don't see much chance for change, you, it's, easy, it's easy to um, adapt to your surroundings, if that makes sense. So because older people than myself was doing it, I looked at it as something to be attained rather than something to be um, avoided. And I fell into the trap of, of, of following the, the masses into prison. You know, he has a family. It's not just him, his actions have consequences to all of us. And that's not fair, that's the bit where I get angry and I just think you're just so self-centred. This is why I do what I do, because I see, I do see the pattern continuously being replayed again in other people's lives, in younger folks' lives and 
it's sad, it saddens me because I can see where it's going and just like I was blinded as a child and thought it would be okay, I can see that they think it's okay as well. He had, unbeknown to me, been what I now know, um, was running. He had two phones um, and they phoned him on this phone and had threatened um, him that if he didn't deliver a certain amount of money the next day then they'd come to the house and stab me to death. Death, violence was all part and package of the of the journey and um, it made it hardened, it, made, it hardened us as children. I think, the, I think one of the saddest things that happened to us as children was that we were exposed to so much violence that it almost became normal. Um, and I see that, I see how that impacts the second and the third generation underneath me now because I see our violence that we related to with one another is now freely being initiated between the younger folk. So now, instead of fighting with your fists, the first thing that the kids are doing are grabbing knives. And then the, the, the extreme of that is that they're grabbing guns. I would be a fool to say to you, we're only getting young people that have been in and out of care, that live in social housing, um, that have the usual social issues attached to them because this is incorrect. This issue affects and can affect any young person. It really depends on where that young person is at that moment in time of their life. There is no way I would have imagined he would choose this path and it's frustrating and upsetting and disappointing but it's not my path it's his path he's leading now and he is choosing to do it we need to take responsibility for ourselves as black men for our youth there's a lack of guidance coming from the elders to the to the young to the young people and because of that they're, being, they're looking to music, they're looking to the hip hop stars, they're looking to fantasy as a, as a, as a way forward and it's just not real. <laughs> it's just simply not real. How I got out was because I had strong men around me to create um, a change of mindset. I had role models. We've started changing, changing the way we think as well so that when we identify young people that are that look like they want to come and fill that void, that we get in there straight away. We make sure that we have those conversations with them and their families and we make those um, referrals to different agencies to make sure that they're engaged in the right way because that's just it, isn't it? If we don't do that, then in a year's time or two years' time, we're going to be back where we started. The court may see or police may see one aspect of it. They're a criminal. Yes, justice needs to be done. Justice needs to be served. But there's also another side of it, and when you get to see the other side, the family breakdowns, the lack of love, the lack of belonging, all of that plays a major part. And when you get to see that, that's the, that's the side that I try to work on. Um, it becomes very hurtful because you feel like you failed. Sometimes you have to speak in a language, and this is why I believe there's only a certain amount of people that can go and talk to them. Because you ain't speaking in a language. You know what I mean? You're there and say, oh yeah, but you should do this and you should do that. You don't know shit. Because you ain't been there and you don't understand that he's scared and he walks with his knife. Because he's going to get rushed. No matter what you tell him. You, you, you ain't stopping those other guys walking with their knives. So no matter what you tell him, he's walking with his tin. And that's how it goes. There is very little prevention going on. There isn't really a strategy to tackle the gang issues uh, that happen in St. Paul's and Eastern. You know, kids are still struggling at schools. They're struggling to get careers advice. When uh, people are coming out from prison, they're struggling to get on the straight and narrow, to access benefits, to access housing. And there is a lot more that society can do. Bristol, the wider communities, the organisations, the institutions, they need to become more aware of the, the, the battles that are being faced by these young people in order to help them. We live in a fallacy, or we live in a, we live in a, um, we live in a society where you're taught 
as long as you have education and as long as you toe the line, you can be successful in life. And for the young black male, that's just simply not true. It's a war zone out here around your own with your chrome out here. Believe me, bro, it's me and my chop toe. Trying to get fat, so they call me fat so. Oh, is that so? Yeah, that's right. I'm trying to be day and night where the cats go. I'm trying to be not where the sewer rats go.